Okay, good afternoon. You ready? First off, my name is Dan Boggs. I am an investigator with the National Transportation Safety Board. Uh, first thing I want to do is I do want to send our, uh, our condolences as, as behalf of the NTSB to the families. It's a horrible loss. We're sorry for your loss. And uh, I'm here to help figure out why it happened. Um, first off, I arrived pretty late on scene uh, yesterday. I just got into town. Uh, to this morning was my first day out at the accident scene. Um, I'm going to be assisted by a group of uh, party members that represent the manufacturer from the airframe and from Piper Aircraft and from Lycoming Engines. Also on my team is going to be the Federal Aviation Administration. Uh, they'll be assisting and gathering some of the documentation that we need. Um, I do want to give out a, a huge thanks that we've seen some uh, outstanding support from the uh, Davies County's and Ohio County Sheriff's Department, uh, the Davies and Ohio County Emergency Management Office, the Kentucky Emergency Management, the Kentucky State Police, the Whiteville and Davies County Fire Departments, the Ohio County Ambulance Services, um, also from the New Panther uh, Church. I guess they opened up their doors when, during this emergency and, and gave us some uh, shelter in there. The Brandon uh, Lane Western Kentucky Minerals, um, David Woosley, who I guess is the airport director, he used his personal helicopter from what I understand and helped uh, locate the accident. Uh, so what I'm about to tell you is just preliminary information. Everything is subject to change since we're still in the fact gathering uh, portion of this investigation. Uh, so I'm here to tell you that on September 27th, a Piper PA-28 November 3079 Mike was the tail number, was involved in an accident at about 10.50 p.m. in Whitesville, Kentucky. The debris field which we are gathering up is extremely large. It covers, I think, over 40 acres, three mountain tops. It's, it's very fragmented right now, and we're having a very difficult time. That's why I'm running a little bit late today. Um, from what we are gathering so far, the flight, this was the last leg of an instructional night cross-country flight. Uh, it had a flight instructor and a student pilot on board. The flight was operated by Eagle Flight Academy in Owensboro. And unfortunately, both the flight instructor and the student pilot uh, succumbed to some fatal injuries. From what we found out so far, the flight departed Owensboro, Davies County Regional Airport about 7.55 on the 27th, and it flew to Bowling Green Airport. Um, it did some traffic pattern work, it stayed in the pattern, did some, some touch and goes out in Bowling Green. Uh, the aircraft then departed about 9.55 to return back to Owensboro. It climbed up to about 4,000 feet MSL, and uh, that's where it's cruised for the rest of its leg back over towards Owensboro. Shortly after passing Beaver Dam, Kentucky, I think it was about 10.40 p.m., the airplane um, slightly was changing course. We believe the, the weather was, uh, the, the wind was blowing them around a little bit. Um, at that point, there are some communications with air traffic control. The flight instructor did contact air traffic control and requested an IFR clearance that they, which means that when a pilot's flying along in visual conditions and it starts to get cloudy and bad, then they can ask for an instrument flight rules uh, leg to fly the rest of the way, which he did. Uh, shortly after the plane uh, or the air traffic controller told the pilot that they needed to immediately turn east to get away from the storm that was approaching them. Uh, they, the track shows that there was a portion of it that turned east. Uh, we're kind of still narrowing down exactly what the course of the, of the aircraft was. Uh, it shows a, maybe a couple of circles up in there. And then shortly after that, about 1050, we lost uh, complete communications with the pilot. Like I said before, the debris field is very large. Um, I've got my team up there right now that's recovering it. So far, we've just recovered a, a few pieces of the wings and the rudder and uh, everything else. We're trying to 
get some equipment up there to drag it up the side of the hill. Um, the only piece that I found that I have not found on the aircraft is about half of an elevator. Uh, we searched uh, two more hillsides this morning. We found the other half of the elevator that, uh, was, that has been missing. Um, and I don't know if we will, so down the road sometimes if, if that we don't find it during the on scene and it pops up, we'll give it to the Sheriff's Department, they'll contact me and we'll, we'll get it picked up. Uh, like I said, this is a preliminary fact-finding mission. It's going to probably be on scene till about Monday, uh, possibly. And then after that, um, we're going to take the aircraft down to a aircraft salvage facility in Springfield, Tennessee, which we will continue our investigation, and that's where we do uh, a lot more detailed inspection of the aircraft as a whole. We will also, once the aircraft inspection is done with, which, will, you know, like I said, will take a, a few days, we're going to be looking um, at all the weather conditions. We'll be looking at the pilot qualifications. We'll be looking at the operation, human factors. We're going to try to look at all aspects of this. It's not just the aircraft we look at. Okay, let me see here. I think we only have a couple more things here I want to talk about. Um, if we have a government shutdown, let's go ahead and address this. It may delay some of our preliminary information a little bit. Um, so I will, between now and what we find out tomorrow night, whether there's a government shutdown, get all the factual information documented. If there's not, then probably within about 10 to 15 days, we will have a preliminary report come out on what we have so far. After that, and we do our detailed investigation, our final reports can take up to about 16 to 18 months before they're published. There's a lot of information that has to be analyzed. We may look at some parts of the aircraft structural wise, we may not but gathering all this weather information, pilot qualifications and interviews, it can take a while. So there may be, uh, there may be some time before that the draft final report is published. Um, I think at that point, I do have some time for some questions. We can open it up and we will go from there. Yes, sir. When you're out looking at debris, you know, are you looking for anything specific to clue you build anything or are you just trying to find things that are missing? Um, Depending on the area, like if we're in an open field, it's very easy to investigate the pieces that you have. When you're at the side of a mountain and it's slippery and it rained for a day and a half and it's muddy, we just try to gather that and be as gentle as we can with it and get it to a place that we can do a complete layout and investigation. So with the where, where the aircraft's located right now and it's spread out almost three quarters of a mile from one part to the other, um, it, we're going to take it to a facility and do a much more detailed investigation on examination. I mean, yeah. Uh, yes. What can you tell us about the individuals involved in the crash? Um, the coroner will release the names on that. Uh, we don't release the names. We, we, we leave that to them. Uh, right now, we're gathering. Matter of fact, I got a team going over to pick up as many of the uh, flight records that they have on the pilot, the, the flight instructor. There's usually not much on a student pilot, maybe an hour or two, and then we'll go through really the qualifications of that. At the same time that we're over there grabbing that, we'll also grab the aircraft logbook to make sure that maintained, that it was maintained properly, inspections were in place, and, and so forth. Yes? So is the weather the confirmed reason for the crash, or is that still kind of being... It's expected? too early to sit there and say that. I mean, of course, we all know there was weather. We know that the air traffic control was weather. We knew that the pilot said that there was weather. Um, so we're definitely, you know, that's definitely at the top of our list. But I can't because I, I'm, I'm strictly doing the on scene portion of it right now. That detailed portion of the weather will be looked at. Actually, our, we got a team in DC right now pulling all the charts and graphs, and they will overlay the flight of the aircraft with the weather. And once I get back, we'll be able to look at all that together. I know you said you're early on in the investigation here. With it spread out over such a large area, is there kind of a strategy there to kind of move around, or is it kind of move as you go and find things as you go? Um, 
really, I mean, we had a people, well, there was a, a, I guess the crew yesterday was searching for about 11 hours and you just get 20, 30 yards apart and you just walk the mountainside and, and you know, aircrafts are white with some striped colors. So uh, you're on the side of a green hill. It's pretty, pretty easy to spot aircraft parts. And uh, like I said, as spread out as this was, I'm actually surprised that we found everything but a three foot section of an elevator. And I'm not, I'm not too upset about that. And then are there any photos of debris you guys are willing to share at this point? No, not at this point. Mm -mm. Yes, sir. Do you know anything about how long the structure has been in the structure? Or even how long it's been a pilot? Not yet. Um, we haven't pulled up all of his records of that yet. What about, pardon, what about um, you know, National Weather Service and forecasting storms, at least a list of storms all day? Do you know anything about the decision they made to, to go up that day at all? No, we don't. I mean, that's the CFI's responsibilities to make sure that um, certified flight instructor, sorry, that's his responsibility to make sure that actually he's even training the student pilot on how to look at weather. Uh, you know, usually everybody's got a tablet and for flight and weather that they could be looking at before you take off an airport. They're supposed to call into the weather service and get a pilot briefing. Uh, so all that will be looked at because those are recorded. We can find out if he did that. Yes. Oh, um, I was just going to ask, if we, are you going to be investigating um, like the flight school and their safety protocols? Absolutely. Yeah. Because it is a flight school and that's where the flight instructor was employed, we will be looking at what, uh, what their protocols are. As well as like the qualifications for a pilot perhaps? Kind of looking into that. Yeah, well, it, it, how he, I mean, how he made it to flight instructor, the FAA will be looking at that. Um, you know, we look at flying, just to answer your question also, flying at night is a requirement for a student pilot to get certified. So there is a certain amount of hours that they have to fly at night to you. So that, that was a normal process that they were flying through. The weather, that overlap, I don't know. We're going to have to look at that and see the overlap of, of where, where they drew the line at. Yes? I hope we're made aware of photos and videos that are posted on social media about when the instructors or when the passengers on the plane has the NTSB been made aware of that? I mean, have you have any comment as to it? I have been made aware of it. Um, I couldn't see it real well on the side of the mountain this morning. We will be diving into that once I get done with the on-scene portion. Re really, there's so much perishable information that I have to make sure I get my hands on while I'm here because time, weather, deteriorates all that. So um, it's important that I get this out of here, get it to a secure location, and then we can go back and look at things that are out there that we've heard about. And also, uh, a question about the weather. So for the NTSB, this overall national standards, is, it, is there any time requirement to fly through any specific weather type, or is it just nighttime flight? No, there's no, there's no requirement to fly through weather. That's, that's, no, we would prefer not. So that's, uh, that's, that's a limitation that the pilots know, an individual that they know needs to be set. Okay, great, you guys were easy on me, thank you.